So, so far we've managed to retrieve data from an existing API, but now it's time for us to create our very own API and see how that actually works. Now, keep in mind that an API is simply an access, uh, we're simply allowing access to our database. We're allowing the public to access our database and collect or save data in that database. So that's all it is. Just like any ordinary website, if you're browsing a website, what you're really doing is interacting with a database using the interface of HTML or PHP. Okay, so the first thing we would do is try to interact with an online server and see our very own online server and see the problems we might face in that situation. Okay, so I do have a web host account here. So if you don't have this, just go to 000webhost.com and create an account there. And then you'll be given uh, a dashboard. Let me go here. You'll be given this dashboard where you can add at least one website. So this is what I'm using so that everybody can follow along. If you have a paid hosting system, uh, that's even better because standards are better when you are paying. So here you're going to click on file manager and the file manager is going to take you to this. So file manager and then it will, you click upload files and then you come to this place. So I had a website here and I deleted all the files so we can start afresh. So in the public HTML, I'm going to create a PHP file here. So I'm going to call it index.php. You may have an index uh, HTML or PHP already there in the uh, folder here. So you can just delete those and create your very own. So let's create one here. Alrighty. Okay, so it's asking me to log in for some reason. So let me go back here and just click that again. Maybe the token has expired. Alrighty. So let me give it a second here. Okay, there we go. So back to the HTML here. Nothing in the folder. So let's create a new file index.php. Let's create. So once the file is created, let's select it and click edit. So we want to add something to see here. So I'm just going to say some text here. Let me click in there. This is an online server like that. And let me hit save. So it won't close this. It will just save for now. And if I go to the home page of this website and refresh, I'll get this is an online server because that's the text I added to my index page. So easy enough. So if I go back to my API here, I want to change the code a little bit. So first of all, we want to change the link to the what API we are accessing. So in this case, our website now is our API. So I'm just going to copy that and then I will put it here like so. Okay, so that's the link to our API now. And also because I'm not expecting JSON data, I'll remove the JSON parse here. And then I will remove the loop here as well because we are not going to be looping through anything. And then this data, I'm just going to put it here. That way, once we grab the output div, we just put whatever we received, the text we received in it like that. Okay, so same thing here, same thing there. Okay, so we are good to go here. Let's go back and give it a shot. So our API refresh and let's try to fetch again. Now, here's an error that we get network error when attempting to fetch the resource. Okay, so this is a security feature that was added to uh, to not allow people to just read from your web server if you don't want them to do so. Now, if I use PHP to read this data, uh, it's going to work. If I use curl, it's going to work. But with uh, fetch and AJAX request, 
it doesn't work like that because this violates the rule that you can only get resources from your very own server and not from another one. This is meant to curb uh, hacking and all that. So how can we solve this problem? Now, if we inspect the element here and goes to go to the console, we'll see that there's this error right here. So this error says cross origin request blocked. So the reason is this, it's saying the header, the CORS header, access control allow origin is missing. So it's giving us the reason why. So it's saying this one is missing in the header. So let's just add that to the header and see. So I'm just going to right click and click copy message here. And then I will go to my uh, online API in the file manager. Now this time what I want to do is use PHP. So move everything over and then put some PHP tags right at the very end. Don't leave any spaces. And then let's do an echo here of the text since now we are using PHP. I'll put my semicolon there. Don't forget that and save. Now just to make sure that things are still running okay, I'll refresh the server and you see that I get exactly the same information. Okay, fine. Now let's add this header that it's asking for. So I'll go here. Now the header should come before anything else. So it should be the first thing to happen. So I'll say header. So the header function is what you use to save, uh, to send headers. So here I'm going to say, I'll put my uh, inverted commas there because I'm putting a string and paste the same error that we got from our, in our uh, fetch function there and I'll put a full colon at the end and just put a star to cover everything and then I'll put a semicolon at the end to avoid errors so I'm going to save so once we do that because that's the header it was asking for right so if I go back here and let's try to fetch information this time so fetch let's see what we get okay so you see now we get this is an online server which means we were now allowed to get information from our online server, which is awesome. So here in this case, maybe if we had uh, some JSON data. So let's try and do this instead. So I'll create a variable here and it's going to be an array like so. So I'll add something, uh, item one like that, okay. So I'm adding an item to the array like so, just like that, just like that. So this is item number two, item three, item four. And then finally, I'm just going to echo this. Now I can't echo a, uh, an array, but what I can do is convert the array to a string using JSON encode. So json encode like this and then i'll put that array like like that so the result of this will be a string and then i'll just echo that so let me save this like so so if i now open this uh, website here uh, what do i get i'll get json data like this simple easy peasy same thing if i try on my fetch here i just fetch i'm going to get json like that so as simple as that we have created a um, a readable api okay so now if you look down here let me clear the console and let's read again so you see what's happening here is that when it's reading it's returning an http uh, okay here that you see http 200 okay you can see that on the corner here. Now that is a status to tell us what's really, uh, that everything is okay. It read from the server and everything was returned okay. Now we can actually change what we return here. Let's just copy exactly this uh, message. So this is HTTP2, okay? So I'm just going to copy that right there. And then I will come to my, uh, oh, 
I'm lost here to my online server here and then since I have a header there let me just add another header I actually don't know if you can put multiple things in the header let's see for a second if this works okay let's just say some text like that some text so I will save this and see if it doesn't cause any problems so back here let's fetch again okay so we get that network problem so it means it doesn't allow us to do it that way so instead we are supposed to add several items in here using a comma because it seems it replaces whatever you add on the other side so we'll put a comma add some more uh text there so save that let's come back here and try to fetch again okay so now we get our item back like that okay so that's good now what I want us to do is to change the HTTP that we're receiving so I'll put HTTP 2 here uh, back here to let me try and fetch again so I can get the response and then there there is the response right there oops it wasn't supposed to go that side so this is using HTTP 2 so I'm just going to actually what I will do is this I want to get all headers here so what I'll do is echo this and say uh, get all headers so I'm just going to echo out the headers instead okay so that we can observe them again so fetch okay so there we go now what I'm looking for is the HTTP uh, version here which I can't seem to find host okay there's the host name the IP address uh, quite an amount of information here but uh, but what I'm looking for is not here unfortunately I don't know how that is possible but anyway let me go down here maybe I will find it in the information below it doesn't seem to be there but that's not a big deal let me just copy this HTTP 2 over there and then uh, let me come back to my online server here so what I want to add in this is the HTTP Ooh, I think I copied too much back here I should have copied this right here let's put that there and then let's put 404 not found okay Let's come back here refresh fetch so that didn't work either the idea was that I wanted to change the status here as you can see the status is okay which means everything went well but I want to change that status to something else like 500 or 404 not found to signify that there was an error on the server of some kind so let's come back here and try something different now get all headers isn't doing us any good here because it doesn't have the information we want so let's put back the a let me remove this some text over here and instead let's try it this way let's add just another header down here I think this should work let me move that here so 404 not found and then uh, let me remove this part over here okay so that we have two separate headers like this I think they should add together let me save that okay let's come back and give it another shot so I'll fetch again all right very nice so now we have a red text and there's 404 not found here which is very nice so we can change our status code which is very very good to signify uh, errors so if you go to Google and Google HTTP status codes, 
you get to see you can go to the developer mozilla mozilla developer website or you can go to wikipedia to see all the um the status codes here that are available so the one we are using right now is 500 internal actually it's 404 which means not found so these bad request is unauthorized and then forbidden and finally 404 so if i want to change it to this code right here all i need to do is put that one there like this and save so this is a way we can tell the user that there was this particular error so we can write some documentation to tell them that once you get a 403 404 this is exactly what it means so these error codes are important because when they are doing a fetch here they can check for those status codes to know whether information was brought in correctly or not because if for example you're expecting json but then you, re you receive a 404 or something then you won't get json anymore so you have to know how to handle that new data that you're expecting so very helpful when somebody is trying to access your api so let's fetch again and see what we get this time so this time we get 403 forbidden because that's the one we gave there so you can easily change the status codes like this so check that check out this list and see what they are all about and so so far this is good we've uh, done two things we've allowed the user to access our page via ajax using headers and also we've managed to give them a custom error code here or a status code that is custom okay so hopefully uh, this has taught you something new and i will see you in the next video where we create an actual database that we can read data from I'll see you then.